Hello again. Sorry if I sound funny. I have a pretty nasty flu virus that's kind of on the tail end, returning to work tomorrow. I want to talk to you about something in America. So this is targeted to Americans. And if you're a child or a teenager, I want you to listen to me very carefully. This is going to simulate a smartphone. Steve Jobs, when he was alive, called it a training wheel. This is an iPod Touch. When you use something like this, keep your head over your shoulders. There's these things in your neck called cervical vertebrae. You're supposed to keep your head up like this. When you use a device like this, go like this. Hold it up like that, like it's in front of your face. Do not look down like this, like you're staring at your feet. Your head weighs, if you're an adult, weighs over 11 pounds and it's pinching the nerves. It's called nerd neck or text neck. If you want to be hunched over and have neck pain and neck headaches for the rest of your life, go ahead and use your smartphone like this, like I see people doing all the time, like they're staring at their feet. That's stupid. Don't do that. I'm telling you, if you're going to use a smartphone, hold it up to your face and use it at eye level. Move your arm. You have a shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist so you can move stuff in front of your face like this. You don't need to hold it like this, like you're taking a leak, okay? Hold it up to your face, use your brain. If you have a neck headache, think about why do you have a neck headache? Maybe you're leaning forward. It doesn't just occur. If your body has a problem with your skeletal system, a lot of people in America have lower back pain. You know what causes lower back pain? Sitting around too much. The CDC says it, the American Academy of Pediatrics says it, uh, the Retired People's Association, AARP, says it. We've got experts and doctors and people on TV channels, on YouTube channels, including this one, saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with rest. In fact, sleep is super important. And you know what people in America aren't getting? They're not getting enough sleep because they're supposed to be going to bed, but they're staring into this, which they might as well point a flashlight into their eyes. Well, did you know that in the back of the retina of your eye, there's these things called subbasal nerve ganglion that are connected to the suprachiasmatic nucleus that regulates cortisol and, and histamine? Yeah, your sleep, your sleep cycle, your circadian rhythm is regulated by light. And I'm telling you that in a dark room, something as dim as a single candle burning or about five lumens is enough to trick your brain into increasing cortisol and suppressing melatonin. What does that do? What's cortisol? It's a stress hormone. It wakes you up. Well, when cortisol is elevated, guess what else is elevated? Histamine. What does that make people do? Sneeze. If you ever try to keep yourself up too much and notice the next morning you start sneezing, that's because there's a whole hormonal cascade that happens if you force yourself to stay awake that jerks up cortisol. Well, what does elevated chronic cortisol do? It causes visceral fat to form around your organs. What does that do? It causes non-alcoholic fatty liver disorder. You know, I could go through this for four hours, but my phone will run out of memory. So I'm going to summarize. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not telling anybody how to live. I'm telling you what's making people sick. And actually, it's not just you. The financialization of agriculture and the food supply in our country has made cheap, affordable, accessible foods very unhealthy with lots of added sugar, unhealthy, ultra-processed oils. <clears throat> natural foods that have been processed into tasteless powders that they add flavors, artificial colors, artificial ingredients. They try to make artificial processed cheap junk industrial food taste like real food. If it comes in a bag or a box with colorful labels and you flip it over and read the ingredients label and it has more than five ingredients, that's probably an ultra processed food. If it has at least one ingredient that you can't pronounce or you don't know what it says because it's some weird chemical name, that's probably an ultra processed food. And I'm telling you right now that fast food, prepackaged food, ultra processed food, food that comes in colorful boxes, microwave food, food that's cooked in plastic, and industrialized, financialized food full of pesticide residue, artificial colors, and synthetic chemicals, that is the largest source of chemistry entering the American diet. And 50% of people in America are obese, and about half the population has pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes, which is from eating incorrectly. And about half the population is heading towards $120 billion in added health care costs because the healthcare system in America is not good at preventable medicine. 
Preventable medicine means a functional medical doctor that spends two or three hours with each patient politely coming up with a diet plan, a meal plan that's based on scientific evidence for what's good for the gut, eating for two, like Dr. Pradip Jamnetas says in his YouTube videos about eating for two, the microbiome. A lot of obese Americans and a lot of sick Americans have deranged gut biome. Do you know what that's caused by? Eating too much of the wrong things and not enough of the right things. What should we be eating? The whole food plant-based diet. That's more greens, more vegetables, more whole fruits, more nuts, and more seeds. What should we not be eating? Stuff from bags and boxes, refined sugars, added sugars, refined carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates. You know, nobody's saying that there's anything wrong with bread that's made from four ingredients. Flour, salt, yeast, and water. Go to the store, Grab one of those plastic bags of bread, flip it over and read the ingredients. There's 35 things. It takes four minutes to read the damn ingredients label. Mm -hmm. That is not real bread. Real bread is simple, has been made since antiquity. Christ Jesus broke bread with his followers. Bread is made of flour, salt, water, and yeast. Knead it in the dough. Let it risen over and over again until the yeast develops amino acids and flavors and eat some of the sugars and the CO2 is from the yeast. They convert the sugar into CO2 and amino acids. That's how brewing works. That's how wort turns into beer and how ju grape juice turns into wine. Do you know why I'm wearing these? These are laser physics goggles because I laser engrave things with an ultraviolet and an infrared laser because I'm into physics and chemistry as a hobby. So how did Aaron become interested in health and nutrition and why am I making this video? Because I'm 40 years old now and I feel better now coming down from a flu virus than I did healthy supposedly at 35 when I was 14 pounds heavier with full-on type 2 diabetes. The first blood check I ever did when I felt f fatter and sicker and low on energy and inflamed and in pain was 347. You know what I did? I hopped on YouTube and I looked up how to treat diabetes without drugs. And you know what I found? 430 YouTube videos by doctors trying to teach people the truth. Dr. Annette Bosworth or Bo Boswell. I could, I could go on and on. Dr. David A. Sinclair, the gerontologist. Dr. Pranip uh the, the sugar guy. Uh, I'm not thinking of the names, but these people, they're on there. They're medical doctors that figured out their practice isn't working. Their patients aren't getting healthier. The healthcare system in America is exceptional at treating acute illness if you're in a car accident, if you're in a snowboarding accident, if you trip and fall and break a bone, if you have some kind of tragic accident. We have excellent MRI scanners and stuff to help the doctors quickly figure out how to set the cast, how to do the surgery. The surgeries are fast. We've got robotic Da Vinci, uh, this, I laser eye surgery, the Star 4 system. You know, they, there's except some really amazing if you have cancer america is one of the best places on earth to get cancer therapy we have amazing medicine we're the, we're the country where continuous glucose monitors were developed by dexcom starting in the 1960s they're up to the seventh generation now there's some really cool things in healthcare in america but the problem is that should healthcare is supposed to be the top of a pyramid you know what's supposed to be at the bottom preventable well what does that mean it means diet and nutrition and exercise and lifestyle. It means going to bed earlier and waking up at the same time every day. It means not playing with lights or smartphones or the internet or TV screens. It means moving, getting up, get off your duff and go do something. D stop paying people to do your yard work on Saturday. Do it yourself. Well, Aaron, my knee hurts, my foot hurts, my hip hurts, my back hurts. Well, after years of living like an American, eating garbage because it's cheap and accessible, yeah, you're going to have a lot of inflammation and pain. That's because the gut is deranged. Gut biome derangement. This is just true. Nothing I'm saying is my personal opinion. It's an observation from doing thousands of hours of research online to figure out what's wrong with me. Because I go have blood tests done. My Western doctor talks to me for 10 minutes and says, which drugs do you want? I mean, it's literally... Uh, it's literally like interacting with a, 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 an AI or something. He doesn't actually, he's not interested in me. He can't be. His schedule's overbooked. He has too many patients. He even told me I'm the last patient he's taking, and I'm not going to give you his name because I don't want to make him feel bad. I'm just saying that is just one data point in an entire system of malfunctioning healthcare in America. And if we add one bit of data, most of the preventable diseases caused by dietary malnutrition and excess of all the wrong things cost the U.S. economy 
almost a trillion dollars a year in added health care expenses if you factor in everything. If you factor in all the sleep loss, stress, anxiety, fear, depression, suicide, crime, right? Days lost from work. Did you know that a lot of older Americans are bedridden? They can't do anything. They're completely dependent like boat anchors on everyone else. Don't you dare say that. Okay? And why are they like that? Because starting in the 1970s, evil large agrochemical companies started spraying weird pesticides and fungicides and herbicides. This is not the way agriculture was meant to be done. It's not a traditional method. You know, European countries that analyze what we're doing here outlawed most of these things. But the financialization of food in America means that these big agrochemical companies and these big food processing companies, I'm not naming anyone in specific, but they have more lobbyists in Congress than any other group. More than Amazon, more than the big oil, more than firearms manufacturers, more than big alcohol. The food and agriculture company has more political representation in America. Well, what are they after? Money, money, money. How can they make more money? By making the food cheaper so their profits are larger. How can they do that? By making the shelf life improve. How do they improve the shelf life? By, by processing out the things bacteria and fungi will eat. So the, the main goal here is to improve the shelf life. If you go into a typical grocery store in America, there'll be aisle after aisle of stuff that comes in colorful bags and boxes that has a shelf life of two years. I'm telling you, if you buy a, a container of organic strawberries and put it on the counter of your house, it'll start growing mold and rot within a few days. That's perishable. If you buy fish and put it on your counter at room temperature, it'll start going foul within a day. If you buy fresh dairy and leave it on your counter at room temperature, it'll go bad really quickly. If you buy eggs and leave them out, they'll go bad really quickly. Real food is highly perishable. The nuts and real oils will rancify, they'll oxidize easily, okay? This processed junk is designed to last longer in the shelf, to reduce losses, to improve profits. It's not designed to improve your health. In fact, it's proven that eating those things, those processed and ultra-processed things, over many years will lead to chronic diseases of many kinds, namely obesity, diabetes type 2, high blood pressure, some cancers or an elevated risk for them, and then when you combine that with inactivity, no exercise, the CDC says only one quarter of adults get an adequate amount of exercise and only one fifth of children. And when looking into the cause, do you know what the number one cited cause of not getting enough physical activity is? Glowing screens, smartphones, tablets, laptops, desktops, and TVs. And why is that? Because there's an infinite amount of distracting content online. The internet, if you don't use it carefully, is an is a vortex of distraction, okay? And I know that. I've read Wikipedia for more than 80,000 hours. I'm 40 and I built my first online computer over dial-up when I was 11 years old without instructions, okay? I read about it on in Carta at my elementary school on CD-ROM on a color uh, IBM computer when I was seven and a half. And then I figured out how to, to do it, how to ground myself I read about electrical engineering and power conditioning and how static works and all of that before I ever tried buying computer components. In fact, it took me three years of mowing lawns, my neighbor's lawns, as a child to generate the $480 in money I needed. And my dad pitched in a couple hundred bucks and drove me to a shop in Kent, Washington to buy the parts. And my first computer by today's standards was nothing miraculous, but I mean, it had a green color screen that he got for free from his workplace that they were getting rid of. The keyboard was a clunky mechanical unit. I actually liked the tactile feel and sound of that. The mouse had one button. I mean, it was an early DOS-based computer. When Windows 3.1 came out and I went to my friend Desmond's house and saw the graphical user interface, that paved the way for me to build my first Windows 95 computer. And the rest is history. I mean, I built like five more computers after that. I ended up with a bunch of different laptops, cell phones, tablets, laptops, MacBooks, iPhones, all kinds of stuff, a smartwatch, the, the rest of it. I'm a tech of technophile or techno nerd. Now I'm saying there's a wise way. If you use these devices correctly, you can actually have a healthy use of them. But the problem is it's addictive. 
The content, the information that's online, is the most addictive form because it taps right into the nucleus accumens or the pleasure center. Dopamine, dopamine. What are you scrolling on social media, on Twitter and Facebook? What are you doing? It's dopamine hit, dopamine hit. What's this? What's that? That's a dopamine hit. You might as well be snorting cocaine every time you touch something in terms of biochemistry. It's a similar. I'm not saying it's the same, but it has a similar effect on being addictive to your brain. It's sugar. It's like sugar. Yeah, it's sugar. Little sugar. Mmm, that's sweet. Sweet addiction. It's a sugar addiction, but it's data. It's an information addiction. In part, that's why I have a, a popular YouTube channel. And thank you for watching my videos. You have an addiction. And I have an addiction to YouTube too. I even pay for the premium and pay $25 a month so that I, I can, from multiple different screens, I can watch YouTube videos without ads. I pay for Amazon Prime. I, I abuse the internet. I'm, I'm coming right out and saying it. I'm, as an information addict, I'm admitting that I have a problem and I know if it's true for me, that it's true for a whole bunch of other people. And I'm, I'm waving my hands, yo, I recognize that I have a problem and I'm telling you with the hope that you might recognize you have a problem too. And I'm asking you, stop playing with it near bedtime. Put the stuff down, wind down, pray, meditate, uh, count, uh, plan, write, listen in your head. Think of the things you have to do or think about what you did during the day, reflect. You know, go into some contemplative reflective time or, or read the Bible. A lot of people find one of the easiest ways to fall asleep is hit Ephesians or Romans or Matthew, wherever you're, where you're the Holy Spirit leads you. Start reading. I, you get 20, 30 pages into there, you'll want to close your eyes and go to sleep because it's very, it's intensive. The, what the, the gospel is very, the, 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 I, I, I usually recommend when people become Christian and want to read the Bible, I tell them to wake up really early in the morning, like 5 a.m. if they don't have to be to work till later and, and make some fresh, strong coffee and drink that and go right to the word while their brain is renewed and fresh from right early in the morning. With bright, no eating anything, just black coffee, right? As soon as you eat something, your brain, your glucose, your groggy, itis, whatever you want to call it. When we eat, it, our blood sugar goes up and it makes us groggy and tired. That's just how it works, especially if it's carbohydrate and sugary, okay? Look at what people used to eat in the 1920s and 30s. Eggs and bacon right? Where's the carbohydrate and eggs vegetables and bacon? And some vegetables, which have tons of fiber, so they're net no, no carb, like hardly any. Maybe it's bread, but it had butter on it, so there's almost low, low glycemic index. It wasn't spiking their blood glucose. What is a typical person, what is a typical, what does a typical child or teenager in America eat for breakfast? It's refined cereal from a colorful box w with strange imagery on it, you know, they, they banned the tobacco companies in 1994 from marketing to children with Joe Camel and the Marlboro Man. But nobody's banning these food companies from marketing unhealthy food to children. So these boxes of this unhealthy cereal are covered brightly colored. They draw the attention. It's like the smartphone screen in print at the grocery store. Hard to not look at. Cartoons, are animals. Cartoons and animals are intrinsically visually attractive to children. And where do they put it? They put it at the eye level of the children. So when they're in there with their parents, they say, hey, mommy, daddy, I want some of this. Are you going to take the advice from a five-year-old? You're the adult. And if you are 10 or 11, think about what you're putting in your body. You know, a lot, I know a lot of the people watching my video are teenagers. Well, you know what? I'm telling you this stuff, and I want you to go ask your parents about it. You say, this guy, I watch his YouTube channel, is telling me that this refined stuff in a box, if it's eaten for a long time, it causes obesity and diabetes, and it's, it's why so many Americans are sick. You know, go, go talk to your parents about it. Maybe if you talk to them, you'll help break them free from the confusion too. He says that using the smartphone near bedtime is bad because the light wakes people up. Ask him about it. You know, go look on Google. Ask, don't just trust what I'm saying in my video. Look it up yourself. Everything that I'm telling you, I've watched in other documentary films. I'm only telling you because I have hundreds of people following me on YouTube, and I feel like this is a, a valid, important message to send. With that, thanks for watching my video. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you around.